Dr. Billa, thanks so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Now we are at the brink of a GST rollout. Is India going through a massive transformation with this big reform? Absolutely. I think GST is a, a historic reform and can only do good uh, yes. for us as an economy. Any reform that uh, results in simplification, I think, is very good for us. That's true. And you had a large conglomerate, so many businesses in so many different sectors, Mr. Berla. So are each of your businesses now ready for a GST rollout? Of course, it will have some disruption and short-term pain. That's true. I think uh, all the businesses have spent a lot of time and effort understanding GST and its implication and, you know, the, the, the rollout uh, nitty-gritty in the last six months. And I think all of them uh, are, are extremely well prepared. Yes. Having said that, all of them, like every other company in the country, yes. Yes. will have to learn on the fly. I think the first few months might be a little uncertain. Yes. But um, like I said, I believe that this is a reform uh, that has taken a long time to come, but uh, is in the inter interest of Indian industry and the economy. That's true. Now, another big reform that we are talking about, Mr. Birla, is the NPA resolution at the behest of Reserve Bank of India. Government has also put in so much effort. Banks are really working hard towards it currently. And the big uh, one, the, the transaction that you sealed today and has been completed is to buy out GP uh, Cement's assets. It's a large transaction. 16,100 crore rupees of uh, debt will go away from one debt-laden company and you will get a large capacity of cement as well. What does That's this true. mean for Ultratech? So Ultratech uh, becomes a much larger player. Uh, the capacity of the company goes to about 93 million tons. It becomes the fourth largest player in the world, uh, which means that really you are at uh, the head table uh, in the global uh, cement industry. Mm -hmm. It means we have a market share of about uh, 20 percent. Most importantly, it gives us access to markets which we didn't have access to earlier. So markets like uh, coastal Andhra Pradesh, markets like uh, East UP, for example, Satna, for example, mm -hmm. we, despite being a national player, really didn't have a presence in these markets. Mm -hmm. All of these are high growth markets. There are other markets where we had a presence, but we needed much more strength. So for example, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand. So that really has been the driving factor behind uh, this acquisition. So it's a large uh, footprint that you have created across India. But then branding and marketing, is JP brand going to continue? Because still you convert that into ultra tech, probably the benefits will not be as huge. I think that's a good question. The understanding is that uh, we will phase out the JP brand and bring in the ultra tech brand uh, in the next two months. So we have two months to do that. Yes. I think these two months will be spent on uh, upgrading the quality of uh, cement being produced by these plants mm -hmm. so that they become uh, equivalent to that of uh, Ultratech uh, cement quality. All right, so that two-month target is a very aggressive target. Another important bit uh, with this asset buyout is that the capital, uh, uh, the capacity utilization across the 17 million tons of operational units that you have bought, how much are they currently and uh, what is uh, Ultratech going to do to improve that and turn around these companies which are debt laden? So a big focus for the next few months is going to be on asset upgradation, retrofitting. Uh, I think these are inherently good plants, but they have been starved of capital for the last few years. So uh, getting them up to capacity, uh, focusing on operating efficiencies, productivity norms. That's going to be the overarching theme uh, for Ultratech uh, with these assets to start with. Uh, I believe that they operate at about 40% capacity just now. And uh, the plan is that uh, by the end of four quarters from now, uh, they would be at an operating capacity of about 60%. 60%. And some of the ones who are probably non-operational in some of the areas, they will be operational as well. That's a part of your plan. So I well. think some of the plants that are non-operational will take a little longer because uh, they're still uh, to be fully built. Right. Uh, but uh, of all the existing plants, hmm. uh, we have a fairly good idea of uh, what it takes to make each plant uh, world class in terms of technology. A bit of a ton, uh, if that uh, you know, indication can be given, what could be that for uh, the JP cement units? So very low just now, yes. but again we have an ambitious target. Mm -hmm. and the target is to uh, achieve an EBITDA per ton of 600 rupees mm -hmm. uh, after four quarters. Okay. Uh, just to put it in context, the EBITDA per ton for Ultratech today is about 1000 rupees. Yes. 
So you've got uh, quite a long journey uh, to travel. In, uh, yes, in terms of the financials as well, 16,100 crore rupees coming in as debt. The EBITDA for Ultratech is expected to be close to about 7,000 odd crore rupees in this particular financial year. Uh, so looking at that, are you comfortable with the debt EBITDA levels or is there a fundraising on the equity side required? So as you would know, a large part of this funding has come from uh, debt. Yeah. And uh, despite that, so even after taking the debt for this uh, transaction, yeah. our debt to EBITDA is at about 2.6, if I remember correctly, and our uh, debt to equity yeah. is at about 0.2. Uh, and just to put it again in context, I think these uh, reflect a balance sheet that's stronger than most of uh, the global majors in the cement business. So um, Altertech is financially very sound. I think it's got... Uh, uh, the benefit of strong cash flows yes. and uh, very much an asset that uh, uh, it has been able to afford. I think uh, the whole magic now lies in sweating the assets and getting a return from them as soon as we can. Yes, to maximize the benefits from these units. But uh, you mentioned that it's uh, debt uh, equity, uh, debt EBITDA is going to be 2.6. So that means the entire 16,100 crores is not going to be the debt on the books of Ultratech as part of the deal. Some part is going as cash. to. So the about uh, 3,000 cr 3, crores has been hmm. financed out of uh, internal accruals. Hmm. And the balance, which is a chunk of it, uh, is being financed through debt that we have raised at sub 8%. Okay. which is perhaps the most competitive in the country today. All right. Now, talking about the overall uh, cement sector, where you have been so focused, Mr. Birla, in the past you have said that the growth and the expansion to maintain the market share that you have currently will be in line with the growth that is seen in the cement sector, which is uh, uh, considered around 7 to 8%. Now, this will require even more expansion. Despite this deal, you will need to expand more. So where could that expansion in capacity come from? Is that going to be more organic? in organic what are the options that you're looking at so um, no specific plans uh, as of now other than the fact that we are putting up uh, a plant in Madhya Pradesh uh, at a cost of about uh, 3,000 crores for about three and a half million tons other than that I think the focus very much is uh, sharply on turning around uh, the assets that we have acquired today hmm. uh, and getting a return from them uh, and bringing them up to speed with the technology that uh, Ultratech uh, enjoys, which is the best in the world today. And uh, Century Textiles merger, is that also on the cards on this front? Even that Century Textiles management is completely different from that of Ultratech. Hmm. Uh, so I don't think there's anything on the cards uh, between the two companies. Uh, I'm not the right person to uh, speak with any kind of authority, but uh, from our end, I don't think there's anything on the anvil that I can talk about. So talking about this particular deal, all regulatory approvals are in place or we still have to go through a few? So you know, the most difficult part of this transaction has been the fact that it's had a plethora of uh, uh, regulatory approvals uh, that uh, we have had to go through and which is why it's taken almost 15 months for us uh, from the time of announcement of the transaction. Yes. But uh, all of those have now uh, been done and uh, we have uh, the assets uh, on our books now. So after this particular experience, uh, would you be looking at other opportunities also in the debt-laden companies because you are present in so many sectors and so many assets are available now. So will Aditya Birla Group focus on more, taking more advantage of uh, the opportunities that are available in the stressed asset space? I don't think so. I don't think there are assets uh, in the spaces that uh, we are interested in okay. or the spaces that we are in today. Uh, so no, that's not an opportunity for us.